Can't talk here, folks. Like I said, I know someone. All rise. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This honorable court is open pursuant to adjournment. The Honorable William T. McGinty presiding. You may be seated. <clears throat> Afternoon, everybody. Afternoon, yeah. So, before I proceed with sentencing, I would like to thank all the spectators that have been present during this trial. I know there have been family members uh, of the victim, Misha Cornwall, as well as for the defendant, Shakira Graham. I know that has been extremely difficult for the families during the past two weeks. However, as I indicated to the jury last week about their service, we live in an incredible country where decisions can be made in a courtroom based upon reason and common sense and not with violence. I believe everyone that has come to this courtroom has observed the requisite solemnity and respect deserving of the flags behind me. I trust it will continue today. The procedure we will follow here today will go as follows. After uh, I go over some instructions right here, uh, the state will, of Ohio will present victim impact testimony in any position on sentencing. The defendant's counsel will be given the opportunity to address the court, and lastly, Shakira Graham will be given the opportunity to address the court prior to the imposition of sentence. Just a brief review that the defendant was arrested for aggravated murder on February the 14th, 2019. The defendant was uh, indicted for that murder on March 8, 2019 and was arraigned on March 13th. Trial commenced on February the 18th, 2020. The jury received the case on Thursday, February 27th and returned its verdict in open court on Friday, February 28th. The defendant was found guilty of all charges of the indictment with the exception that in count one of the indictment, wherein the defendant was found guilty of the lesser included offense of murder in violation of 2903.02a. Furthermore, the defendant was found guilty of all the specifications, uh, which we refer to as gun specifications under 2941.14a and 2941.15a. Uh, the one and three year gun specifications that were contained in counts one through seven. Uh, the court is of the, uh, of the opinion that counts one, two, three, four, five, and six are allied offenses of similar import and that the prosecutor will have to elect which crime to be sentenced under. The court believes that counts uh, seven for grand theft and count eight for receiving stolen property are not allied offenses of similar import. Uh, and Mr. Prosecutor, do you have an uh, which one you're going to be sentenced under? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we would agree with the court's position. Uh, we do believe that counts one through six are allied offenses. Uh, and based on this fact, Your Honor, we would be asking this court to sentence the defendant, Ms. Graham, to count two aggravated murder. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, so before opposing sentence, uh, Ms. Graham, I would note for the record that I will be considering the following at this hearing today. The record that has been made during the course of this trial and all proceedings the oral statements that will be made in open court here today, the plea negotiations or the lack thereof, the victim impact statements, and any other information that I received during the course of this sentence. The court must and will formulate its decision based upon the overriding principles and purposes of felony sentencing, namely to protect the public from future crime by the defendant or others, and to punish the offender using the minimum sanctions that the court determines will accomplish those purposes without imposing an unnecessary burden on the state or lo local government resources. To achieve these purposes, the court has considered the need for incapacitation, deterrence, rehabilitation, and providing for restitution. The court must and has also considered the seriousness and recidivism factors pursuant to the offense and the offender pursuant to 29-29-12 of the revised code. The court must and will ensure that the sentence being imposed does not demean the seriousness of the crime and the impact it has on the victim and is consistent with other similar offenses committed by like offenders. Finally, the sentence is not based upon any impermissible purposes, namely the race, ethnic background, gender, or religion of Ms. Graham. Ms. Graham, do you understand everything I've said so far? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Further, Ms. Grant, you may be eligible <coughs> for earned credits, uh, earned days of credit under the circumstances specified under 2967.193. To earn credit is not automatic. You may only do so by productive participation in educational, vocational, and or substance abuse treatment programs and or prison industrial employment of up to 8% of your state in prison terms. Uh, Post-release control not notification pursuant to counts 7 and 8. Uh, Post-release control will be a part of your sentence on counts number 7 and 8. And it's a discretionary period not to exceed more than three years. Uh, that means that the adult parole authority will determine if they want you on that particular uh, reporting. Ms. Graham, if you should violate the terms and conditions of that post-release control, the parole board may conduct a hearing and at the conclusion of the hearing, the adult parole authority may, could return you to prison for up to one half of the originally stated sentence for that charge. Do you understand that? Furthermore, should you fail to report to your parole officer while on post-release control, you could be indicted by the grand jury for the crime of escape. Furthermore, if you should commit any felony while on post-release control at the conclusion of the case, either by trial or plea, the sentencing judge for the new case would have the option of sentencing you to an additional one-year sentence or what time remains on your unused supervision time consecutive to that new original sentence. Do you understand that? So at this time right here, I'll turn it over to the state of Ohio for any presentation that they may have. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the state is going to be called for Misha Cornwall's mother, uh, Jacqueline Harrigan, who would like to address the court. Okay. Come Jacqueline Harrigan, H A R R I G A N. On December 17th, I boarded a plane at 8 o'clock. My life was fine. I got off that plane around 9.30, December 17th. My life was fine. I put my keys in my side door. And as I entered my home, I found my 27-year-old son at the bottom of the stairs. That was the impact that affected my life until this very day, until the day I died. Misha, I was blessed to be Misha's mom. He was the best thing that ever happened to me. People always used to compliment me about how wonderful my son was. He never gave me no problems, Your Honor besides a speeding ticket or going to traffic court. You understand me. I had a wonderful son. He loved his mother. We had a good relationship. <sighs> Michak was loving and Michak was kind. He loved to laugh. He enjoyed going to work. He's the only person I know loved going to work. He was in the hospital for two weeks, and all he keep asking the doctor is, when are you going to relieve me to go to work? The doctor said, you're the only person I know who want to go to work. Most people ask me for days off. You asking me to go to work. That's how committed he was to his job. He enjoyed playing his PlayStation. He enjoyed computers. He enjoyed eating pizza. He enjoyed <laughs> drinking different beers. I got turned on to Great Lake Bay because of my son. Every year, a flavor come out, he brought it to the house. Our family is very small, Your Honor. My mother only had four kids. There's only three of us left. Me and my sister only had one child apiece. I lost my son on December 17th. He never forgot a birthday. He never forgot a Christmas. He never forgot a Mother's Day. He gave the best gift. <laughs> My son was getting his credit together. He wanted to buy a house in a couple years. <sighs> we 
Your Honor, my life right now is filled with sorrow, pain, an everlasting yearning for what I could never have back. I sat here for two weeks, and my heart grieved for this young lady, even though she took my son away, because she is just so foolish and ignorant to waste her life and to take my son's life. And for what? A PlayStation, some weed, a liquor, two guns, I mean, how long did that last her? A day? Come on now, they said they threw her out of the hotel the next day, so how long did that money last her? She took my son's life, Your Honor. I am asking the court to give this young lady the harshest penalty you can give her for taking my 27-year-old son. That's all I have to say, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Your Honor, um, I, I think Mom is the only one that is going to end up speaking. Um, Judge, I think I said this to the jury, and it, it always, I get reminded of it again when we come in here. So often we're worried about what the law is and how long somebody's going to go to prison and the gun specification and alley defenses, and we forget about the impact that this has on the people um, around our victims. A mother should never have to bury her son, and you know sometimes it is it is somebody's time. Somebody's sick or somebody um, is ailing. This was a nonsense, clueless crime that happened for no reason. <coughs> I know before this trial, Matt, I, I sat and I talked with Miss Harrigan and her nephew. Uh, her nephew was there uh, when Meshack was found, and it. As we were going through this, I remember this, and he said, Meshach, if she wanted the stuff, he would have just given it to her. Because that's the kind of guy he was. He wasn't a violent man. He worked. He liked to play video games. Um, and he was kind. You see the text messages, Judge, and I'm not going to relitigate the case here, but it was clear that he was conned into believing that the relationship that he had with Ms. Graham was more than what it actually was. Uh, he was a mark. He was set up. And when she came to his house that night, she knew what she was there to do. And I don't know what led to him dying that night, but I know that certainly she was the one that did it. And I know that for what she got to take his life was just absolute nonsense. So often, Judge, when we sit here in front of you, we, we're asking you to do um, or to give a sentence that is for however many years, and we don't know a lot about it the defendant or what happened there. You had the opportunity, Judge, to see every single piece of this, to sit and listen to every piece of evidence and see how it pointed to her piece by piece by piece and how the other people that were alleged to be involved were eliminated based on DNA and cell phones and text messages and all of those things. But the biggest thing that I walked away from this case, Judge, and the biggest reason that I want you to impose a sentence that shows her just how useless and nonsense, nonsensical her actions were, was a statement that she made during her hour and 15 minute statement that was littered with lies and inconsistencies. And it's very rare, Judge, that we get to say it and we have proof of it when we say that a defendant has showed no remorse. And in that hour and 15 minute statement, Judge, the one thing that kept popping up to me and kept being repeated to me were the lines that she stated I don't know how to feel sad. I just met him. That was how much he was worth to her. Um, that's how much his life was worth to her, that she didn't know how to feel sad because she just met him. Judge, Ms. Graham is a felon. She has a history of attempted robbery. Uh, she has a history of failure to comply with police officers. She's been sent to prison before. And this court has the opportunity to make sure that she never has the opportunity to do the things that she did to Meshack again. Uh, Ms. Graham is going to go to prison for life. Uh, her sentencing range is going to be anywhere from 23 to life to life without the possibility of parole with three years for the gun specification. 
I would ask you, Judge, to remember what you heard here, remember the legacy that Meshach left, and remember the pain that the family will be in for the rest of their life when you impose your sentence. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Mr. Sims? Your Honor, may it please the court, um, on behalf of Ms. Graham, um, uh, we are sorry about what happened to Misha. We are sorry that that day happened. Um, Your Honor, uh, and as we sit here at different ends of the table, we sit here at different tables because we see the case differently. Uh, and uh, as Ms. Graham sits here today, she, uh, again, um, is still insisting you know, upon her innocence in this case. And I think one of the things that this, the state of Ohio mentioned the text messages. And if you recall the text messages between her and Meshach back and forth, you saw the caring they had for each other. Judge, you sat there and you saw it yourself. Um, again, the jury um, saw it a different way. Judge, I think that the jury lost their way, in my opinion. But that was the verdict. That's how we work. We, 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 live, in, we live with the verdict given us by the jury. We don't always agree with the verdict, but that was their verdict. And again, Judge, uh, she's very sorry and compassionate and um, wish, she, wish that that day never happened to someone that she really cared about. And Judge, uh, again, uh, she has a very modest uh, criminal history, as you, as you know. And uh, we know certain sentences in this case, such as this case, are uh, statutory. And she understands she's looking at a life sentence, Judge. But uh, again, she has indicated to me she vows to appeal her sentence in this matter, Judge. And uh, she vows to not stop fighting until she wins her innocence in this matter. And uh, at this point, Judge, we throw ourselves upon the mercy of this court. Um, I think her dad would like to say a few words. And then, she, and then Shakira would say, like, say words. Okay. If that's appropriate, Judge. Okay. Sir, you want to come forward? Yeah, yeah, come on, me, please. Yeah. State your name for the record, please. My name is Colonel Graham. In your name. relationship to Shakira, yeah. please? Graham. G R A H A M. I'm Shakira's father. Thank you, Judge, for letting me uh, address the court. Um, I appreciate the way in which you conducted this uh, court. I, I sat here, too, for two weeks. I'm Shakira's father. Her mother's also present in the courtroom, along with her stepmother and also other members of our family. I do apologize. I do uh, want to express my sympathy to uh, Ms. Harrington in the death of her son. I want to say simply, as I sat here, I want you to know I've been a pastor, I'm a United Methodist pastor. And I've served in that capacity for 34 years. Her mother's also a pastor. In my 34 years as a pastor, on nine occasions, I have stood with families and I've eulogized their family members that have been murdered, many who are unsolved. One of the persons in the courtroom today who has been here is Sister Denise McCray, her son, 29 years old, murdered in Cincinnati. I eulogized her son. Just in January, I eulogized the son of a friend who was Shakira's age in Akron, Ohio, killed on New Year's Eve. My daughter was raised in a home with pastors. She was taught right from wrong. It is my full belief I accept the decision of the court. But as her father, as someone who knows her, I do not believe that my daughter committed the act that she has been convicted of. I simply ask, Judge, that you would use your discretion as you have in her sentencing. She has two small children at home, and I know that you are required by law to do what you must do. I will pray for her. I will pray for this family. 
and I pray that all will somehow find healing, and I pray for a day of justice. I pray that somehow the person who committed the act will be found. In the meantime, the court has spoken, and I pray that you would just show leniency that one day my daughter may be able to embrace her two young children who await her at home. I thank you for allowing me to address this court, and I pray, uh, again, I just pray for all of those impacted by what has happened, the death of this young man. Thank you for letting me address the court. The Honorable Secure Grant, I can say a few words. Okay. Ms. Grant? You want to stand where you are? Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, could you? Can you get up? Thank you. Your Honor, I would like to first thank you for the part that you play and partake in in justice. I would like to thank everybody who seeks justice. Um, and I would like to express my condolences to the Shots family. I would also like to acknowledge that I did not come to trial as a self-possessed murderer seeking to be found not guilty and killed as a murderer. Well, I came to trial to fight for my innocence. And I'm sorry for what happened to me, Shad, but I will continue to fight for my innocence. Thank you. Oh, you know, can I, can I just not, sure. not, not the appropriate time or not, but I, I would like to, uh, just before I forget, mm -hmm. do it. Um, I'd like to move the court down to, uh, because as she sits here, she is, of course, indigent. Mm -hmm. And I'd like the court to consider waiving all fines and costs. And as well as, you know, if you could put in the journal entry uh, for her to be evaluated for any mental health issues that she uh, have, ha have or may have, and that she received the appropriate treatment for those issues uh, while she's in the uh, confines of state of And um, again, that she be given credit for all they served. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh, we're here again in case number 637307, State of Ohio versus Shakira Graham. In count two of the indictment, it is the sentence of this court for the aggravated murder of Meshach Cornwell, that the defendant is sentenced to the Ohio Reformatory for Women for a term of life imprisonment with parole eligibility after serving 25 years in prison. The defendant is sentenced to a three-year term of imprisonment pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 2941.145A, prior to and consecutive to the commencement of a life sentence. As to count seven grand theft, a felony of the fourth degree, the, descent, the defendant is sentenced to a term of 18 months at the Ohio Reformatory for Women. As to count eight, receiving stolen property, the defendant is sentenced to a term of 18 months at the Ohio Reformatory for Women. The sentence shall run concurrent to one another and concurrent to count two of the indictment. The defendant shall be given the time served in the amount of 373 days. Your care, Graham, it's my duty to inform you of your appellate rights that you possess here today pursuant to Ohio Criminal Rule 32B. Uh, this is notification of your right to appeal pursuant to this rule. Uh, since you have been found guilty and sentenced to prison, you have a mandatory right to appeal. Uh, as indicated by your lawyer and uh, with your uh, uh, statement of it, are you una unable to pay the costs of the appeal? Okay then counsel will be appointed for you without cost. That if you are, are you unable to pay the cost of documents necessary to appeal? Yes. The documents will be provided without cost. The defendant has right to have a notice of appeal timely filed on her behalf. And uh, that would be your last duty, Mr. Sims, to have that notice of appeal filed? Yeah, that will be filed this week. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Uh, and uh, therefore, then, uh, we will order that the transcript be provided at state's cost, and counsel will uh, be appointed and will be in the, either today's journal entry or by the end of the week. Uh, anything further from the state of Ohio? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything further from the defendant? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Nothing further. All rise.